We've made it to part four. Get ready for some drama because we're getting on board one emotional roller coaster that lasts, I don't know, like five or six minutes. Okay, so remember how we already fit the faceplate? Well, I noticed that because we use opal rather than white, it means that the perspex is slightly translucent. It's great for allowing the light from the flash through. However, there is a black outline where the monitor sits that shows through. I also noticed a big dirty mark on the lower half of the machine that was coming from the other side. This just won't do. I decided to remove the faceplate even though I just stuck it in place with some super sticky double-sided carpet tape. This caused huge problems as it was so sticky I wound up snapping the faceplate in half when I removed it. Bummer. I ordered new perspex and decided to fill the bolt holes and just have the double sided sticky tape keep the faceplate in position. Once I had all this mess in order, I could add the T mold into the front. I wanted to have a metal monitor surround for the photo booth. I fabricated this from 0.9mm steel and gave it a slightly brushed finish. I thought the machine having a long cable would be helpful at events, so I bought a 10 meter extension and fitted it to a multi-plug connector and then I drilled a hole for the cable and fit it through. The stand ends were open, which I didn't like, so I busted out the TIG welder and capped them all. Once they were smoothed down, the stand was ready for paint. Using my old van as a spray booth and looking like someone from GTA San Andreas, I primed the stand with some high build primer and then sprayed it silver. Okay, you see all that fine dust? That's why you want to wear actual PPE when doing this. Also, I should have picked a better place with more ventilation. Not just for health reasons, but all that spray paint in the air dries and then lands back on your workpiece and it can ruin it. This happened to me and it left the stand with a matte finish instead of gloss, so be aware of that. Once the stand was dry, I added some casters. I used some spacers to get them all the right level and then bolted them on. The bolts were slightly too long and would catch on the wheels, so I used my angle grinder to trim them down. Now, the printer needs a little bit of help with guiding the picture through the printing slot. I fabricated a little bed that sat right up against the printer and lipped over the edge of the hole at the bottom. This gave the picture something to slide along and prevented it from falling back inside the machine. Getting close! It's time to add some software to the photo booth. I went with DSLR booth, but there are plenty of other applications available. A good program will allow you to alter settings for your photos and adjust the printer preferences. Now that's that, the build's complete. For saying this was made by mainly second-hand parts by somebody in their garage, 
I'd say it doesn't look too bad. Sure, there's plenty I would change if I went back and did it again. I've learnt a lot during this build and I'll most likely take what I've learnt and revisit making a photo booth again in the future. Until then, I'm keeping the ball rolling and I've got many projects in mind, some of which will be out very soon. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of those. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Let me know what you think about how the photo booth turned out and things you want to see in the future in the comments section below. And thanks for watching. This is the end. I can't believe it. It's done. It's done. What's next?